I got it right here. Well, if you put a bit of light in there. Okay, let me change out the light bulb. And turn it off, otherwise it'll be too hot to put in. Where is the big light bulb? No, that's a head light bulb. Don't put that one in. Okay. I've got it. So we change out a bigger light bulb here. Oh, shit. Let me just go. Hang on. Watch out, Rocky. Oh, mercy. Hang on just a second. Sorry about that, guys. i got to get a light bulb changed out. Okay. Hang on just a second. I'll be right there. I want to put a better light on this whole thing. Okay, now let's see. I'll see if this works. Okay, there we go. That's much better. That is much better. Now y'all can see what I'm doing. Now y'all can see what I'm doing. Sorry about the delay. Just wanted to show you a little something. <coughs> I got back to fussing with this thing today and even though I'm doing my own unique take on it, I kind of wanted to add a little bit of a sinew right here in the neck. And I was going to show you how to do that. At least how I do it. Maybe you can learn a little sculpting. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just taking a piece of clay, flattening out, making it, uh, making it uh, a little bit of sinews. Then I'm just going to find the position I want to put that in and lay it down right here. And in the movie, uh, Jason tends to have sinews that kind of curve. I'm not going to do that so much. Mine are going to be like lateral and flat, a little bit thicker. Um, my wife is watching over my shoulder. I think she's going to give me some critiques. You're in the limelight. You're what? Oh, okay, okay. My wife wants me to move the camera just a little bit so she doesn't get on camera. She's a little camera shy, so I got to respect that. So here's what I'm going to do. Take this. He's right here. Kind of cutting it square. I'm trying to make a square piece. It's got to be a thick piece, but square. Just shape and mold it. And just lay it up on the neck like that. And of course, it's going to be a little bit longer than what I want. So all I do is just take that, lay that there. Then I'll take my tool and kind of put it to where it looks like the muscle is joining. I've got my thing of clay over there. Let me get the tool here. I've got so many tools in this damn bend. So all I'm going to do is just take this and I'm going to get my glasses on and just kind of shave this down and make it like, like, like almost like a solid muscle.
like a little square, like a triangle thing right there. And then I will cut it off right about here because I've got a, a muscle running across here. So I just want to take it and kind of do a lap trap right there. So I've got one that's a little bit defined here, but I thought there's too big of a gap there and I was going to add that. So then all I do, kind of mash that in place. Go around the edges. Smooth it out a little bit. Make it a little bit curved. Smooth it out. Push it in. And then once I've got that in place, I take a heat gun, which is my all-time favorite tool, and hit it a little bit just to wet it down so it gets a little bit soft and moist. I take a sculpting tool, usually a curved one here. You gotta move, sometimes you gotta move fast with this thing because these, these, uh, these tools just, just clay or dry quick. This is medium uh, monster clay. Oh, I can't find the one I want. Here it is. Okay. Now just take it and tuck the edges a little bit. Just mash it, make sure it looks like it blends in. And just smooth it down on the sides so it looks like a smooth muscle, like it's joined to the body. And from that, once it solidifies, it's solid, I can look at it, decide if that's going to be thick enough or thin enough, because I've got pictures right over here on my laptop. And of course, he's got real thick neck muscles. So what I would do is, is, is just kind of go in here and detail little lines in there. It's got to look like it joins. So it's kind of hard because I got to make it smooth and then I got to make it look uh, rough at the same time. So then of course you've got striations in the muscles. I just draw little lines in there and draw it straight down. They don't have to be single lines all the way down. You can just like make interruption breaks and stuff. I do that because it gives a little bit more of a like a rotted look to it. And that's what we're going for. It's because he's been submerged in the lake for 30 years. And of course he gets out, he's not going to have the perfect dentistry. You can see here on the side of the face, he's got no teeth here. This is going to be a blank spot where there's no teeth. So that's going to be a black spot in the mask. It's just going to be, probably shave that down just a little bit. But I don't want to get too far in because I'm afraid I'm going to hit the mold up under here. And if I do that, then I'm in a little bit of trouble. Um, so what I can do, it's like here, this is a smooth area right here where there's two muscles that are coming down. And so what I'm trying to do there, and I don't have a thin little thing, I just come in there and just shave down in between those muscles to give it a little bit of room. Right there. And then that separates a piece of clay into two parts. And then you just go back in and create another muscle like that and then take a where's my favorite tool I've got a favorite tool on here and I know it's on here it's got a cup in on it and dang if I can find it where is it that gun that I can't find anything Hang on. oh god it's somewhere right here probably right here here it is have it in my cup. I'm not sure to keep it. I just come down here and just shave down in here a little bit on the back side, and then you can come in the front and do the same. 
And I know it looks like it was muscle definition, but I've been looking at it and I thought, okay, there's not quite enough depth on the muscles. So like I said, you know, it can come back and it can be pretty more well defined. Because I want a, I'm starting to realize that even though this is going to be primarily resin and latex, um, the depth and definition of these muscles is really what I want to go for. So, I have this and it has to look like it's coming out smoothly. And just come down like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, because like I said, there's some stuff that I'm doing that's like an artistic signature to find mine from anybody else's that might do this in the future. And then, uh, you kind of want to make sure these things look like they're naturally joining up. Because they all come out of the neck. And you've got the big trap lap muscles in the neck. Trap muscles here. And then you've got a group of muscles that come out the sides. And those are the ones that are very defining. And uh, that's what I want to do. is I've got the depth pretty much for all of that right there. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. Um, like I said, because this is the mask, it's still not showing any of the facial details, but it is able to show the parts that you would see on the side of the face. And like I said, I thought this was done, but then I go back and I look at it and I go, nope, I don't like that. It's got to look different. I've got to redo this chin area. That's just a rough thing of the pores. But I'm going to melt that down and take a pour roller when I get them and roll it right across there and kind of get that a little bit better to find. This is all this is, is me taking a little knife, a little edge of a knife like this and going like this and just lifting up pieces of clay and doing that and then heating it, hitting it with a heat gun. And then when I hit it with a heat gun, sometimes like right here, there's a small spot that looks like it's sunk in. That may be a natural, that might be a natural thing I want to leave in there. Because, you know, it's rotted and that type of thing. So, um, all I do is just push this in and lift up little itty bitty pits of skin right there. And that's just taking a flat piece like this. And just pushing gently, just easily and gently up under there. And then what that does is that lifts the clay up. So it makes it look like lifted flesh. And then if I hit it with a heat gun. Like this. And I'll turn this around to the side just a little bit more. Hang on just a second so I can see it. You guys can see it fine, but I need to see it a little bit better. Then I hit it with a heat gun a little bit, and it gets soft, and you see it's soft and shiny. Sometimes I let it sit for a little while, and let that kind of mush in, but if I want to go for another effect, I'll go back in where the clay is real soft and push it the other way, and it lifts the clay up. And when it lifts that clay up like that, it gives the impressions of raised flesh but see here's the whole thing i'm doing this in latex and resin primarily resin i don't know how well those little tiny details are going to transfer in latex um i'm gonna wave uh to these people bring them on camera so i don't want anybody to miss anything if they don't want to see it so let me do this I waved everybody real quick. Linda, I know you're watching. I appreciate you watching. You seem to be one of my biggest fans, Linda. I really appreciate that. Um, like I told you, Linda, this is something that you can do very easily. You can get a set of these tools. These are these are sculpting tools. You can get these for I got these on Amazon a few years ago and I think they were like $13. So, thank you, Brad. I appreciate that. Um, I've been working so hard at this, and it's not me tooting my own horn. 
it's I am very, very, very subconscious about details at the same time. Uh, there's a professional studio that made the actual movie mask, so I'm working off those photos. And I don't want to copy the exact line for line detail on theirs. So that's where I just, I changed things up a little bit on mine. You can still recognize it as Jason um, from Vengeance. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm not the exclusive person doing this. I am the only one doing this right now. But the guys that are in charge of this uh, in the future may allow somebody else to do their version. But for now, they're letting me be the one to do this. And I am so appreciative of that. Um, it's such an honor to be able to do this. Um, because, I mean, there's there's probably about four or five fan films coming out. But my gut instinct told me that this was the one out of all the ones that are coming out that is going to be the the definitive, and I'm going to say this live on camera, this is going to be the definitive non-Hollywood sequel. Uh, and by non-Hollywood, I mean it's just not licensed and produced by a Hollywood studio. It's not licensed and produced by a Hollywood director. Um, it's not licensed and produced with anything to do Hollywood. It is a fan film. But there are people involved with this that are involved with former Friday the 13th films in more ways than one. We know that C.J. Graham plays Elias Voorhees. We know Steve Dash, the late great Steve Dash, plays uh, Sheriff Rodotti. Um, but there's more that you don't know. I happen to know. Um, because I've been privileged with information, but I can't disclose it. There is more to the whole picture of this movie that is Friday the 13th direct related. And that's why I'm saying this is so, I mean, it's almost microscopically tied to the franchise. It is a dark, um... It is a more dark uh, look at the franchise. Uh, the story's kind of weird, but the thing of it is, it is, it's got the characters that we know and love. It's got new characters. Um, you know, everybody pretty much following the film knows what the synopsis is. But I'm telling you guys, this is going to be a definitive Friday the 13th film in itself. I mean, you know, Never Hike Alone was a great movie. Uh, and some of the fan films that are coming out, like Jason Rising, are going to be great movies. But I'm telling you, Friday the 13th Vengeance, there are more people involved in this movie behind the scenes that are involved with the original Friday the 13th Part 6. And there is somebody that has been involved with every single Friday the 13th film. Every single one of them. And so, this is where, like I said, it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of hard for me. It's not hard for me to keep secrets. But it's very exciting. I mean, when you guys find out all the little microscopic details, you'll understand why I was so proud to be able to get on board with this and do this. Um, and just like I said, the great Jason Brooks is the man that I owe the most tremendous and utmost thanks to for this. Uh, because he entrusted me with the photos and, and, and all the little secrets and stuff. And I am just like I said, you never meet a nicer guy. I've never met him in person. But I've talked to him for length online about all kinds of details. And I'm telling you, he is literally and quite gracefully, believe it or not, the next Jason. Um, I think it may come down to him battling Derek Mears for the title. 
if you want to put it in WWE format, uh, that would be a good way to go. It'd be Jason Brooks versus Derek Mears for the title. And I got to say, I think Jason Brooks is going to win. Um, <laughs> you know, I haven't watched WWE in some years, but man, I'll tell you what. You know, if they had a Vengeance title or they had a Friday the 13th Jason title. But trust me, no, Jason Brooks is right in there in the class with everybody else. Trust me, he is Jason. Um, this is, hey, Joanne. Now, Joanne, I want to tell you guys something about Joanne. Joanne is Don Shell's mom. And Don Shell's was one of the guys in the film. And Joanne has been, she is a hoot and a holler. I mean, this lady is, oh my God, I can't describe it. She's like the mom I wish I would have had growing up. Um, she's incredibly funny, witty, and she's incredibly talented too. Uh, she helped me a lot with some of the problems I was having because, uh, you know, Don has one of the masks. And um, there's two. Jason has one and Don has one. And even though I've got the photos, I was trying to get Jason Brooks, who's, you know, pretty busy, to do critiques on this. So then I had to go to Don, and Don's, you know, out of town. So then Joanne stepped out and was giving me tips on, okay, you could do this, you could do that, you could change that. And she really um, helped me bring this to life with a lot of things like, you know, household items. You don't have to go to a hobby store or, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 a specialty store to get a lot of stuff. You can get, you know, sponges and stuff like that. And she was just helping me out with, with the details, textures, and stuff like that. So she is a real wonderful person uh, to have helping. So I thank Joanne for that, too. Um, But if you guys have any questions or anything, please feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to, to say something. Okay. My wife is moving the camera and playing peekaboo. Hi. <laughs> All right. So now <clears throat> I'm going to adjust this real quick. I'm going to go over here to the laptop and get the photo. A little bit work on a little bit more detail right here I've got a bald spot and I'm going to put some detail in there I see a lot of this Lewis Fry who's watching is an excellent sculptor and a painter and Lewis knows as well as most people that a lot of details when you do this kind of thing the paint is what really brings a lot of detail out so where I'm trying to sculpt and make like indentions and stuff like that, the paint is going to be what really pops this up. So, you know, what I'm doing is like this is just amateur hour basically. I'm not a professional in any way, shape, or form on doing this. But um, I do want to uh, acknowledge people that are better than I am that are, that are watching this. So... Um, Lewis Fry is one of them. He's an absolutely stunning artist. And um, if I can ever learn anything from guys like that, or they want to look at this and critique and say, oh, okay, I see what you're trying to do. Uh, here's a way to do it. Please feel free. Please feel free to let me know. Because, man, I'm telling you, I really, 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 really could use any and all professional help. Hey, Rich. Thank you for joining uh, um, so, like I said, you know, this is something that, 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 that has been, you know, a couple of months in process. I'm just trying to finalize and finish out all the little fine details. And, like I said, with the pour roller, I'm going to go across there and hit that with that. But what I like to do is just take a heat gun after I do that and make those inventions and just kind of like let the, let the clay melt in and smooth out. And then where there might be some lines that look like they're going to be goopy or something like that, just kind of lay them over. Because this all up here, 
this pour roll, this whole thing right here, that's all supposed to be pours. And I've got some already put in here. I've already got some pours of the skin already put in. But like I said, you know, here's what I'll do with that. I will take a uh, tool, usually a, a, a squirrely uh, uh, tool, and I'll just kind of do this with it. But it's too painstaking to do this and get it exactly right. And just take a little squirrely tool and put it in there and make little pores and stuff like that. So the pores in here are different sizes. So then I heat it with a heat gun, let it kind of get wet. They close in on themselves, you know, look a little bit different. Um, for the silicone and resin, this will be an amazing piece. Um, I'm not going to do silicone masks with this because there is a company that already made the movie mask and they might have the rights and license from, from Jason Brooks to do just that. Um, I'm just going to do the latex and the resin, ver uh, resin versions of this. Um, so resin bus. <clears throat> you see a lot of true effects. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's been it's been it's been me kind of going in there and looking at it and going, okay, I like this, and then I would tell my wife and say, okay, what do you think? And my wife would go, what about doing definitive lines here, here, and here? And I'm like, I don't understand what you're talking about. What do you mean by definitive lines? And that's where she would pick up a tool, and she can't really draw anything. But then she kind of goes and does her thing, and I'm going, okay, that might work. It's like accenting some of the bone structure, and then I melt it down, and then it looks like a deeper uh, crevice or something right there. And it gives it more depth and definition. And uh, even though it's a bone piece and it's supposed to be smooth, and I'm like, okay, that works. But then I have to go back in and kind of smooth it out and make it look more bone-like because it's really bone with flesh up under the skin. And the flesh texture has been the hardest part of this to get down. That's really been the hardest part. But if I can do underlying areas with a little bit of raised bone structure, that's what I like. Topher, how you doing, buddy? Welcome to the feed. Topher, I don't know. I was watching your feed a little bit earlier, and you seem to be doing really good work with that one, man. Um, do you have a bunch of these sculpting tools here? I imagine you do, but if you don't, bud, they can be got on Amazon pretty cheaply. Um, I've had mine for a little while. But you get a complete set for, oh, how much? Good God. Uh, $14, $15, something like that. And there's some tools in here I've never used, but I try to at least get some kind of effects with each and every one. I'm going to lift this up over the ear. Go over here to my laptop where I've got these photos and do a little work on the ear. Because the ear, like I said, the colors, when the paint time comes out, the colors are really what's going to make this. And this is not really an ear ear, so to speak. It's an open, it, this is an inner ear, believe it or not. This is, hey, Toph, glad you joined. Um, this is an inner ear, so what I'm trying to do is sculpt out the inner ear bones of the uh, inner ear that we all have. And this is what they thought, okay, he doesn't have an ear per se, but uh, you just kind of want to get what looks like the inner ear. And I'm going off the pictures and trying to make that look as realistic as possible. And uh, it's, uh, it's a challenge. There's a lot of challenges in this. Topher, you know that, don't you? 
You have everything? Topher does good work too, man. He's the one that, he and I, I keep telling the story, and I love to tell the story because Topher's such a good sport about it. Um, he and I were almost quote-unquote in direct combat, uh, competition. Uh, we both kind of had the same idea unknowingly and were going after the ghost Jason thing. And he got photos from Vince Asante. I got photos from Vince Asante. And, of course, I was driving truck at the time, so I didn't have time to really work on anything. And Topher, man, he come out with a really killer kick-ass ghost chasing. But I was surprised. I was like, dude, that is so good. And it was like, you know, I'm not upset because he got he, he did it. But now, dude, you're working on that, uh, I, I could swear that, that dead uh, Ted, uh, undead Ted thing uh, that you're doing is I got a feeling that's going to pop up in the Jason Rising movie. I don't know why. I just got a feeling about that. I may be wrong. You can tell me I'm wrong, but dude, <laughs> it's like we're working on the same damn wavelength on things, and it's, it's, it's amazing. It's incredible. It's just like, I, I love it. Because you got people like Topher that are that are skilled, and, and I don't know how exactly how experienced he is with sculpting and stuff. I mean, I've been doing not this kind of sculpting, but I did it when I was a for for years and had to sculpt foam mostly. And we had to do clay sculpting on, on body parts and stuff like that, so I do have kind of a background with that. But the thing is, is um, it's so exciting to see guys like Topher, you know, who have a love for this thing, and they get in there and they want to do their own versions and stuff, and they just they just knock it out, and it just looks so beautiful. And it's like, man, that is so great. It's just absolutely wonderful. And then there are guys out there in the groups that are that are that are uh, you know that are uh, not so experienced, and they don't feel that confident. And it's like, well, you know, they'll they'll ask me, and I'll be like, you know, there's a guy in the UK that is uh, autistic, that is an incredible artist. And he's doing the, he did a pumpkin head. And he, over there in the UK, they don't have the same materials that we have in the US. We have like Ultra Cal and silicone. They have silicone, but they don't have like Ultra Cal like we do. And, um, you already, you already, oh yeah, I do, I do. <laughs> Did somebody ask about that? Ghost Jason? Yeah. Um, yeah, I got this one from, uh, this is the, Splat Voorhees is the guy that Jason Brooks picked to be the man to do the Vengeance Jason, uh, ones, and that is the, uh, that is the uh, Vengeance Jason mask, and it fits just absolutely perfectly, hang on, I'm going to flip this around. I got a little bit of work to do over here with this. Um, this is an area that I kind of thought, oh, I'm going to work on that. But this mask, I mean, it absolutely fits perfectly. Goes down over the ear. Um, it goes right over the top. And then he's got that bone, uh, missing bone piece right there. It fits right. Now, what, here's the beautiful thing. Look at this. These are elastic straps. It goes right down over the ear here, or the ear canal. You remember what I was telling you guys about that bald spot he's going to have in the back of his head where the pressure of the straps are? That fits right over that. And these are, you would never be able to tell this, but these are elastic strap, but they're done in a brown leather. They look like brown leather. And, I mean, this fits just absolutely perfectly. So, if you guys are, you know, if you guys... Uh, like this well enough that you buy a mask or something or or you want a resin display bus for it um, Oh Jason Ryzen already has a hood. Okay, that's cool, but you know dude You could you really could do and so here's the um, you really could do uh, Get involved with something like that if you know the the people, you know um, showcase your work a little bit and, um, you know, not just a hockey mask. You do a great job with that. But with the sculpting, 
showcase out a little bit and um, then, then, then go approach people and say, look, you know, I'm such a fan. I'd really love the opportunity to do this. Would you trust me enough, you know, with photos or stuff like that? You need references to work from, though. And I was blessed enough to get references from Jason Brooks on this. Anyway, um, here's a little bit. I'm glad I've got such a good light. Here's a little bit of the definitive trachea uh, area. And like I said, the trap muscles that come down through the neck right here. Um, what I wanted to do with that was is just get And I haven't even done the underside here yet. That's going to be poor rolled. But this is just a trachea carved out roughly. And um, a lot of this is going to be paint, um, but I do want the bands to be well defined. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show this right here real quick and just scratch this out and do that live. And I'm not gonna take 100% full credit on this because I showed a photo of my wife working on it. She helps out a little bit too, not very much, but she does a little. She does help a little bit. I must have something in here. Either I'm hitting the sculpt or something. I don't know what that is. It was a rough spot right there. I don't know what that is. It might be the form. God forbid if I hit that form. Whew. But uh, the thing of this is, basically for those of you that, that are interested in sculpting, um, look up photos online of human anatomy. And the thing that I'm blessed with is having a photographic memory. I'm able to look at something and pretty much replicate and reproduce it by memory, just by looking at it, um, like the throat, and just carve that out. Um, and like I said, some of these muscles, the way I've done this, is not going to be identical per se to the film. This is just my own version of how it's going to look, and um, because like I said, this a lot of this is going to be done in latex. And let me turn this around, and up. Oh, let me turn this around, and I'll show you guys on the back of it. I can still have to do work right here. Um, I still have to refine this part of the ear, and then of course the back. You know, I've got a couple of things. I've got like the little knot hole here with my initials in it, and the little thing right here on the heart and all that. Um, the backbone that I've carved out that I have to kind of refine a little bit, that's going to be a lot of paint work there. And then, of course, I do, like, you know, the pores and the, and the lines and kind of all this has to be redone with pouring. Um, there has to be more definitive pouring done in there. Um, but it's just like I said, you know, this is very easy. If I want to put lines in here, I just take a thing and just go straight down. And just hit it with a heat gun, and I can do a couple lines and cross them and do this like this. And then you see how it's like all that is, is rough. All you do, take a heat gun on low setting, just put it up there for about a second. That's all you need. And then get soft and mushy, and that softens out. And it just becomes porous. And then if you want to make it more clear, just go right back in there and gently put your blade right back in there. And run it down like that. And there you go. And that's it. That's pretty much it with that. Um, I think my phone is low on battery power, so I'm going to plug it in. Hang on before we go and lose this. Uh, let me set you down here for a second. Okay, there we go. Let's see if I pop back up. There we go. Okay, cool. So, um, that's pretty much a lot of it. Um, I can do a little bit of work right here on this um, spinal column for you guys. I'll do that real quick. Let me get this done I get the photo for that I uh, pop the picture up you stupid thing my phone wants to be the one to kind of do this hang on there it is okay Tim Jones come on in buddy 
Come on in. I'm just doing a little bit of work on this in areas uh, to show some people who were sculptors or wanted to learn how to sculpt, kind of how to do it. Now on this area here, the spinal column, I'm looking at the photos. I see I've got rough edges there. That's going to be paint. That's going to be dead flesh. But it's going to be paint. And what I kind of want to do is just, I like to think I could smooth that out. And I could make it rough. But because the paint is going to be what really does the job for a lot of this. Uh, it's going to be... Um, square it in and I'm just like you know rough it up a little bit flatten it out there's not a whole lot of texture other than the bone protruding from the skin so I'm just kind of sculpting that out getting a little bit definitive right there for this to bring it down and the idea is to try to melt and mesh the bone and the flesh to make it look like it merges together. So grab the heat gun. Put it on there. Let's go back in there and just kind of gently melt and mess it. You do straight lines, but I want to uh, I need a curve, curve, here we go, here we go. I'm going to kind of do this and make that look smooth so where it looks like it's bone and, and it's no, there's no definitive lines coming out of there. That way when I go to paint it, it will look okay. Because the thing about latex that I'm not sure Thank you, Tim. Um, and this is not really finished, and this is not really like per se detail for detail the way it's going to be in the movie. If you guys ever get a chance to see this thing up close and personal, you'll know my details are a little bit off. But it's only because like I'm trying to make this mine. It's like any of the guys that make a, a mask or anything like that, or a bust or a sculpt or something. They they have references or something to work from, like, you know, uh, photos or movie images or what have you. And they'll tweak it and make it their own and do their own thing to make it stand out from anybody else. And, like I said, there's already been a professional studio that's done this. So, um, they've done the, 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 the two movie masks that were made, uh, the under masks, these things. And I'm just doing a version that, not copycats, not bites, not recasts, or any of that bullshit. It's my own interpretation going off of photos. So, um, you know, this is, this is just, you know, my original kind of thing. Thank you, Christopher, for watching. Um, so, like I said, anytime you guys want any help or support with anything like sculpting or if you got ideas or you got you've got questions or anything feel free to ask me dude i'll i'll do anything i can to help most of you guys um in any way i can to do it because you know that's what i think is good about being a, a, a an artist is uh to help each other and support each other and lift each other up you know there are guys out there like Joe, um, oh God, Joe Davis, I think his name is. I can't remember his name. He uh, he does a lot of painting. He's a tattoo artist, and he does uh, hobby painting part-time. And um, he is excellent. Oh, man, he is just excellent. He just finished the Jaws. Uh, Bruce Shark, about 36 feet, uh, 36 inches long. There's about three foot great white shark from Jaws, Bruce. And he painted that thing up and oh man, that thing is just beautiful. 
absolutely beautiful. So, you know, he's doing that and it's just incredible. And he does much better work than I do in so far as painting. I mean, what I do, I enjoy what I do. And I enjoy the, the fact that I can paint, but man, I'm telling you, there's guys, always people out there that are better than you. And that's not a bad thing. Because you can take inspiration from that. You know, people sit there and say something like, oh, that sucks, that looks like shit. You know what? Don't get mad at them. You know, if they start laughing at you or something like that, get determined to go, okay, you think this looks like shit? All right, I'm going to say, I, okay, let's say it looks like shit. How can I make it better? And that's where you dig deep down inside yourself and you say, how do I make this look good? And you just look at it and you go, okay, this is what I can do to make it better. And that's what life's all about. You got you to gotta, you gotta find what you're good at and always constantly improving on stuff. You know, I've had this thing the way I wanted it for about a month. And then the movie Crunch Time is coming down next month. And I thought, I could definitely do a lot better with this thing to, to make it look really stunning. Because, you know, people would be happy because it's going to be the Friday the 13th Vengeance sculpt. But then in my mind, I'm like, I could be so much better. Just me personally. And that's not trying to be egotistical or anything. It's just, I have that kind of OCD type thing where I I really feel like I need to push myself and push myself and push myself and try to do better. Um, you know, because I did make one mistake and hopefully I can live it down. But, you know, this is what I'm doing to, you know, try to alleviate and pay for one mistake. So, um, you know, and just prove myself. And, and, and I was thankful that I could do that. Um, in doing this. And like I said, you know, there's so many people, Noel Guerrero, uh, guy just joined on. He's, he's an amazing guy too. He does amazing work. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's so many people out there that are so much better at things than I am. You know, I don't think I'm all that great. I'm just, I'm just, you know, good. But then again, you know, there are things that I've done that I've had skills in, like taxidermy for a number of years, that I've been able to take those and apply to this. And it's worked out really well, for me anyway. Um, but, you know, there's things we can all teach each other. No good res, man. I'm telling you, you do excellent work, too. I, I love watching you guys in that group and just watching what you come out with and what you do. And I know you guys like watching me, but man, I'm telling you, I would love to see some of you guys do some work and, and, and sculpt and stuff like that because I would love to learn things too. I'm probably, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are things that I'm doing here that you could look at, uh, you could look at and you go, oh, I would do that differently. And I would be open-minded enough to go, okay, you know. Teach me how to do that or show me how to do that. I'd like to try that too. You know, because we can always learn from everybody on how to do stuff differently and make things look better for ourselves as well as people around us. And the thing is, like I said, you know, the big thing for me is uplifting other people and being honest and saying, okay, yeah, that looks good, but you know what? I might try this, and I really don't say that that much because I don't really want to come off like an asshole because people nowadays can just misinterpret the smallest things and just think you're running them down or something like that. And I never want to do that to anybody. I'm just, I, I just don't, that's not my heart to do that to anybody. And Tim Jones, you the man, <laughs> guy. Dude, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, uh, I really know um, the thing with this is I've got like some pour rollers from Scandinavia coming. And so what I'm just doing is I'm marking this where I know the pours are going to be. And then when the pour rollers come in, 
I'm going to melt this down and just roll it across because on the on the on the photos that I'm looking at on my laptop to my right, um, there are areas that have got pores. There's areas that have got stripes and 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 strands. There's areas that have got this road rash. So it's going to be like two or three layers of stuff on this thing and. What I'm worried about, and this is what really gets me, is I'm worried how well is this going to translate to latex. Um, I'm thinking that a lot of this is going to involve painting. And if it involves painting, um, I may do a good job at it, but there are going to be people out there like Joe and yourself that are probably going to be much, much better at doing like tiny, tiny, uber microscopic detail work. And, uh, you know, so it may come to a point where if I get a bunch of orders and stuff, I might have to look and look at somebody and say, hey, dude, can you do me a favor and paint one of these up for this guy and uh, let me see how it looks. And then, you know, if I get like too much on one time and stuff and I can't do it, um, then I may have to hire somebody to help me paint. Because uh, I'm telling you, this thing is this thing is like uber detailed. It is, it is just beyond, it's beyond explanation for the for the thing on how detailed it is. And I'm not sure how well of a latex mass is going to be, um, because. Uh, latex is not as resilient as silicone as far as details. And with all the details in this, see, I'm doing this to, to capture a lot of stuff for the resin bus. And uh, that's where I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, I'm going to be a little bit concerned with um, trying to get that perfected. And so I don't know if I am overthinking it or worrying too much about the way it's going to come out in latex. Uh, do you have any feedback on that, No. What do you think? Like I said, I can't do this in silicone because there's a company that already made the two masks, and I think they're holding the license and rights with Jason to do silicone versions. Of course, they're going to be uber expensive. But, uh, you know, if you can see where uh, there might be, you know, oh, man, it costs them, what, like $3,500 or so to get just two masks done for the movie? And it's just like, man, I don't want to have to charge that much money. That's way out of anybody's league. So... And this is another poor rolled area with stripes and, 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 and whatnot. And I'll probably go in here and just kind of do this. Now the road rash thing is interesting. Because like I said, I'm just making pores and stuff here. Because all this is going to be poor detailed down through here. So I just punch those in there and just say, okay, that's where I'm going to pour a roll. But here's a technique that is cool that I'll show you just because I'm doing this. You melt down the clay. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Have you done this, snow? Take a Brillo pad. And just mush it in there. And get kind of that raised skin texture. See, that's what I'm saying is a lot of this looks like road rash. And, um, I'm thinking, you know, like I said, I'm going to make a silicone sleeve of this first and foremost. So I can capture all the detail. And if the clay breaks or the mold breaks, then I can just melt this down and pour it back in the silicone and recapture it. Um, that way I save it, and I don't worry about losing it, because if I lost this thing, 
my heart would break. I'm telling you, I was like, it would just be devastating. But, uh, yeah, the Noel, I'm glad that you said that. Um, first layer of plaster is not so thick. Um, so, yeah, I'm, like I said, you know, there's just little details like right here in the back of the neck. I know those are going to come out. And some of these fine lines and stuff, like the road rash, it's just rough texture, and of course I know that the bald spots will come out. These are skull spots. Then there's little things like here, where it's raised, and supposed to be raised flesh, right here. That's kind of what I'm worried about. I have to hit that and kind of wash that out. Hang on just a second. I do that real quick. Oh, got the heat gun on a stupid, hang on, I gotta put the phone down a second. Mm. Okay, right here you can see where these lines are, chopped in there. Kinda hit it with a heat gun, chop them up. So I'm get mushy a little bit. Let's see how it melts. I'm just going with the lines. Kind of redefine it a little bit. It takes all the sharp edges off of it. So there's a little road rash here, but it's supposed to be raised.